Dude, Classroom of the Lead Volume 2 is a wild ride. We got Aina Koji trying to babysit Class D, making sure they don't self-implode, all the while picking up two new girls like they're goddamn Pokemon. So without further ado, what happens? Okay, so our story starts back up in Classroom D, and everybody's super excited because this is the first time in two months that they'd be getting any spending money. But like always, there's a little bit of a problem. There's some mix up with the school, so they wouldn't be getting their points just yet. At the end of class, Sai Sensei ushers Sudo into the faculty room, telling him to show up because it's really important. So the day goes on after, as usual, Aina Koji goes back to his dorms. He's just chilling out in his room, but out of nowhere, his doors just swing wide open. It's Sudo on the other end. His face is beet red. He's breathing heavily. He's freaking out. He needs help. Aina Koji wasn't really sure how to deal with this, neither did he want to deal with it, so he just asked him what the hell's going on. But he didn't really have to do much because within five minutes, Kushida was also knocking at his door. Apparently, his room had become the hideout spot for the entire gang, something he wasn't really happy with. Kushida was also interested in what was going on, so Sudo broke it down for them. Recently, he became a starter on the basketball team, which for any first year student was a massive honor. But this left a lot of the regulars on the team feeling incredibly jealous, specifically three boys from Class C. So they invited Sudo out to a secluded building called the Special Building. Then when Sudo got there, they started a fight with them, but Sudo just absolutely manhandled them. But this was all according to plan for the boys. They then turned around and complained to the school, saying that Sudo was the one who started the fight, Sudo was the one who invited them out, and Sudo was the one who should be punished. Sudo of course called bull on all of this and told the school that there might have been a witness who can testify for his case. The school, however, had to pass judgment and told Sudo that he had until Tuesday to find evidence and the witness or they would move forward with the case, which means Sudo would be suspended for at least until summer and Class D would lose all the points they've gained up till now. Anakoji and Kushida talked it over and from this point on, they would be taking over the case because if they left Sudo to his own devices, he'd just make things way worse. For now, the right play was to find the witness because there was no way in hell they're gonna get the three boys to admit that they're lying. But things just got way worse from this point on. At the end of homeroom next day, Sai Sensei announced Sudo's case to the entire class. And not only that, apparently all the teachers would be talking about this with their students because Sudo mentioned a witness and they needed to find that witness so the entire school would know. After Sai and Sudo left, Class D students started complaining. Sudo was doing this all over again. Why is he causing so much trouble? But fortunately, Hirata and Kushida were able to step in and get the class together to come help Sudo. So at the end of class, Class D divided up into two groups, but Horikita completely refused to take part in the process, telling them that what's even the point? Even if they help Sudo this time, he's just gonna turn around and do the same thing all over again. So the investigation continued, but the Class D students couldn't find anything. And this just led to further depression on their end. They cursed the fact that they weren't placed in class A because life would be so easy if that were the case. Sai Sensei strode into class in the middle of this and told them that there still might be a way for them to get to class A. This school gave you two types of points, individual points and class points. Class points are what determined how many individual points you got and where your class was ranked. Individual points, however, let you buy all the things that you wanted and use the facilities. And this means you can buy anything. So theoretically speaking, if you saved up enough individual points, you could buy your transfer from class D all the way to class A. But the amount of points you needed to get from class D to class A was monumental, coming in at 20 million, something far outside the reach for any class D student. Demoralized, the gang met up back at Ainokoji's place, and it was all doom and gloom until Horikita crashed the party with a monumental clue. She had found who the witness was, it was Sakura from their own class. Kushida tried to call Sakura right away, but she wouldn't answer. But Kushida wasn't really getting the hint, so she approached Sakura right after class the next day, but she was completely blown off. Sakura denied knowing anything about the case and told them that she couldn't help him out, and after that just ran. But on the way out, she bumped into another student and dropped her camera, and the camera broke. Sakura clutched onto the camera, almost about to cry. Anybody could tell that this camera was super important to her. Well, it was just five days until the trial, and the students started getting more and more restless. They resented Sudo for taking away all the points they worked so hard to get. With the pressure obviously building, Horikita contacted Ainokoji, telling him that 
she would help get Sakura's testimony, but it wouldn't be easy. Since Sakura was from Class D, her testimony carried little weight. Ainokoji, already knowing this, suggested a different angle. He noticed that there were cameras fitted all through campus near all the classes. So there might be cameras fitted in the building where the fight took place. So Ainokoji and Horikita made their way over there, but zero luck. They couldn't find any cameras near the crime scene. But during their investigation, they ran into Ichinose from Class B, who was also there trying to figure out what happened. She heard about the case from her homeroom teacher and wanted to know the details. So Ainokoji filled her in on everything that's happened up till now, and Ichinose decided to help them out. This was monumental since Class B's involvement could be vital. But just the next day, Ainokoji was heading out from his dorm and he ran into Ichinose, so they decided to walk to class together. On the way there, Ichinose said that she needed his help. What was it for? Was it a fight? Was it an exam? Was it some sort of strategy? Nope. Ichinose had just received a confession and needed to know how to respond to it. Ainokoji pondered for a quick second. Wow. She actually thinks I have any level of experience with women. That's crazy. But Ichinose didn't care and was adamant on his help. So she pulled him behind the gym 10 minutes before the confession was to take place. But once Ichinose's admirer saw Ainokoji, she started crying her eyes out. Ainokoji, being the gentleman that he is, took this opportunity to just dip. But before he left, he handed Ichinose an important piece of advice. Listen, just be honest. A confession deserves at least that much. Ichinose was thankful and promised him that she'd return the favor someday. We cut to Sunday afternoon and it was two days until the trial. Ainokoji caught himself waiting for both Sakura and Kushida at the shopping district. Apparently Kushida had reached out to Sakura to help her fix her camera and she agreed. So they all met up and went to the electronics store. But the second Sakura noticed the store clerk, she froze up. What was going on? But things started to slowly unravel as Kushida started talking to the store clerk and he got more aggressive by the second hitting on her repeatedly. And when it was Sakura's turn to fill out the address on the form, Ainokoji pieced it all together. So he stepped up to the counter, took the form from Sakura, and filled out his own address. Contact me when the repairs are over, he explained. The store clerk couldn't really say anything to this and just accepted. Sakura thanked Ainokoji for his help and confided in him that she really wanted to help Sudo out, but she was just scared. She's not good at talking to strangers and wasn't really sure if her testimony would be effective. But no more. She resolved herself and said that she would help Sudo's case. It was now Monday morning and the trial was tomorrow. On the way to school, Ainokoji ran into Ichinose and a boy from Class B called Kanzaki. Kanzaki had set up a message on the school board notifying students to come forward and help with Sudo's case. It even used points as an incentive. Ainokoji knew at this point Class B was serious. At the end of homeroom, Ainokoji informed Sai-sensei about Sakura's testimony. Sai grilled her about why she didn't come forward sooner, but could not deny that her testimony existed and she would present it to the school. But Sakura would have to testify in person. This scared the hell out of her until she found out that both Ainokoji and Horikita would also be there. After school, Sakura invited Ainokoji back to her dorm. She was considering calling in sick for the trial. Ainokoji tried calming her down and gave her this piece of advice. When you testify tomorrow, don't think of me. Don't think of Sudo. Don't think of anyone else. Do this for yourself as somebody who wants to come forward and do the right thing. This eased Sakura and she was ready to testify. Later that evening, Kushida called everyone to Ainokoji's room with a massive announcement. She had found out that Sakura was actually a model whose name was Shizuku and she had been hiding her true identity from everyone. Oh, this got the boys going. After the discussion, everyone left and it was just Ainokoji and Kushida. Kushida, without warning, got up close to Ainokoji's ear, her lips inches from him. She had a personal request, one she needed help with after this case. And if Ainokoji did help her out, she would give him her most precious possession. And with that, Kushida left, acting as if nothing happened and Ainokoji was as uncomfortable as ever. Now that he was alone, Ainokoji wanted to look into something, so he pulled up his laptop and went on to Sakura's blog. Sakura had come to the school to hide her identity. Why? Ainokoji browsed her blog and found something worrying. One of her fans had been bombarding her with creepy messages that kept getting worse and worse. With some brainstorming, Ainokoji figured out that that fan was actually the creepy store clerk from the store and now everything made sense. He was a stalker. We cut to the next day and it's 15 minutes before the trial. 
Sakura made it but was still nervous. They met up with the three boys who filed the complaint and their homeroom teacher, Sakagami Sensei. The hearing took place in the student council room with both the secretary and the president. This was terrible for Horikita, since with her brother there, she could barely even think. The hearing commenced and it came to a stalemate with both sides saying that the other was lying. Horikita needed to question the boys, but she could barely get her act together. Ainokoji knew what he needed to do. So he casually got up from his desk, walked behind Horikita and then enacted his master plan. He tickled her with all his might. This jolted Horikita back to reality and she was able to question the boys and poke holes in their testimony. But this was no good. Sudo had no evidence. The boys said that Sudo attacked them and they had the injuries to prove it. While Sudo said it was self-defense, but he had no injuries to prove that. But Horikita still had her trump card and called in Sakura to testify. Sakura had trouble at first opening up, but then was able to testify telling everyone that it was the Class C boys who started the fight. Sakagami Sensei started to question her testimony, trying to demerit it. But Sakura had evidence nobody had expected. She had photos of herself in the special building at the time the fight took place, and she had the timestamps to prove it. But still, this wasn't definitive proof. It didn't prove who started the fight. But Sakagami Sensei was willing to compromise. One week of suspension for my boys, but two weeks for Sudo. Horikita wasn't about to accept this deal, so the student council was forced to do a retrial tomorrow. If no further evidence was introduced, they'd have to judge the case based on what they had so far. And since this was a mistrial, the punishment would be way heavier with expulsion on the table. Ainokoji met back up with Ichinose and Kanzaki, letting them know what happened so far. Horikita then approached Ichinose asking to borrow points. Ichinose asked what for, and Horikita said that she wanted to buy a stepladder and some cameras. Ichinose understood where this plan was going and was on board. So the morning of the mistrial, they installed the cameras at the crime scene. When Ainokoji returned back to class, he noticed Sakura at her desk and she was on edge, way more than usual. It felt like she was readying herself to do something. What was she gonna do? But no matter, Ainokoji still had his own problems. He started the plan by luring the Class C boys to the special building. He did this by having Kushida contact them all individually with flirty texts. But once the boys got on the scene and noticed Ainokoji, they were on edge. And they got even more restless when Ichinose showed up. Ichinose told the boys that she knew that they were lying. And not only that, the school also knew that they were lying. She put doubts in their heads, saying things like, why didn't they just punish Sudo right away? If the school knew Sudo was the perpetrator, why not just expel him or suspend him then and there? Why even bother holding a trial? The boys confidently called her bluff, but started to panic when she said she had evidence. Then she pointed to a spot near the ceiling, further down the hall. And there it was, a security camera that would have captured the entire event. Combined with the heat and Ichinose's supposed evidence, the boys started to panic. Everything was going according to plan. The boys were sure if the school knew, all three of them would be expelled. But Ainokoji offered them a way out. Withdraw the complaint. If there is no complaint, no one gets punished, everyone gets off scot-free. The boys talked it over and accepted. With victory guaranteed, Ainokoji turned his focus onto Sakura. At this school, you could track any of your contacts on your phone. And when he checked Sakura's location, his stomach dropped. She was at the entrance of the electronics store, so without even thinking, Ainokoji just started sprinting over, and Ichinose, without even a word, started following him. She knew something was up. And when they arrived at the scene, they saw Sakura almost being assaulted by the store clerk. Both Ainokoji and Ichinose took out their phones and started taking pictures. They approached the store clerk, telling him that his life was over. Ainokoji got closer to the clerk, kneeled down, and looked into his face and told him that if he ever came near Sakura again, he'd beat him to a pulp. Sakura was relieved and broke down in Ainokoji's arms. They decided to head back and Ichinose told Ainokoji that this whole basketball incident was a deliberate attack. There was a boy called Ruen who was leading Class C and he was not to be taken lightly. While all of this was happening, the retrial commenced, but it wasn't much of a show since when the Class C boys showed up, they withdrew the complaint and Sudo was free to go. He vowed never to put his classmates in this situation ever again. So after the trial, everyone departed except for Sai and Horikita. Sai asked Horikita, so who came up with the plan to save Sudo? Of course, it was Ainokoji. And Horikita was starting to see why Sai was so fixated on him. Sai reiterated that the key to getting to class A was Ainokoji, but it would be tough. If they used him right, they could win. 
but if they used him wrong, he could destroy everything that they worked to build. According to Sai, Ainokoji was in fact the most defective student in Class D. And when our hero arrived, Horikita confronted him. Ainokoji, be honest, are you using me as a puppet? She noticed how Ainokoji was leading her all the way to the security camera, to planting fake evidence. He was using her from the very beginning. Ainokoji was annoyed at this conversation, stating that nothing like that was going on and that he only wanted to help his friends. To Ainokoji, none of this stuff mattered. Fighting Class C, getting to Class A, he didn't care for any of it. All he wanted to do was lead his peaceful life, no matter what. 